There's just some things to keep in mind with that. Of course, uh, I like Bill Webster's definition of grief. He says, grief is an emotional response to a significant loss. And again, tying it together with emotion, uh, if there's a, a, a situation or a, a loss includes some form of emotion, then grief is going to be the, what happens. And of course, remember, mourning is how you carry that out. All right, again, helping, keeping, what to keep in mind when you're going to be helping someone with a significant loss. One of the things, again, just to, again, by review, people process loss differently. And so just because someone processes uh, a breakup, for example, in a romance this way, doesn't mean that everyone is going to do that. And we're going to be talking about some of those differences here in, in this session. So that's why I'm bringing that to your mind re in a remembrance thing. Another one is acknowledgement of the loss and the hurt is vital. Uh, it's important, particularly for a lot of personality types, for you to acknowledge you're hurting or your pain must really be deep or your heart must be broken. In some way, the, simply the acknowledgement of that pain is really a benefit to the griever. And so that's going to be true even if the loss is not as close as maybe a spouse, like we talked about in a previous session. Uh, acknowledging that loss and hurt, that's going to be a vital if you're going to be a, a help and a guide to someone who's going through the, the grieving process for any reason. Another one, of course, is time is the mourner's friend. And whether that and is something that you share or some, with them to help them understand the grieving process, or whether it's you yourself keeping in mind, okay, this person is grieving, I want to give them time to grieve. In other words, not expect them to get over it tomorrow or next week, uh, but give them time. So either way, keeping the time factor in mind either for your response with them or even telling, helping them understand that time is going to be a factor. And of course, again, that grief comes in unpredictable waves. And that's one of the surprise attacks, as you might say, that some people experience whenever grief overtakes them or whenever a loss takes place, that this, it's just like, wow, it hits me out of nowhere. It's unpredictable. I feel so out of control. That's real common in the grieving process, particularly whenever it's a significant loss. Another one, however, which is important for you to keep in mind as a help, as a caregiver for a, a grieving person is that grief can actually build over time if not acknowledged. Uh, grief that is stuffed, grief that is pushed away, grief that is postponed can actually build in intensity. Um, I can recall one situation Actually, it was a personal one. Uh, my youngest brother, at uh, when my mother my my mother actually died uh, a year and a half before my grandmother, and my uh, my grandmother was actually really close to the family. She was interactive. We saw her on a regular basis, and my youngest brother was at a point in a place in his life where. He was struggling a little bit in life, and I noted that he didn't mourn. He didn't cry at mom's funeral uh, or any time that I knew of. Now, I wasn't around him the whole, the whole week, so I didn't know. I thought maybe he did earlier. But sure enough, a year and a half later, when grandmother died, I was there, performed that, that ceremony as well. And in the back, I was talking to my brother, and actually another brother was there too, and just out of nowhere, this younger brother broke down and sobbed uncontrollably for the longest time. Grief had built up over time. Grieving, losing, mo losing mom, he stuffed it, he pushed it away, he postponed it, and now a new loss came up and it emerged. And uh, it, it, it actually built. He very wisely made the statement when he was able to gain composure, I well, must have needed to do that. And, and that's true, he really did. And, uh, and, and to me, that's one illustration how that grief stuffed or postponed can actually build and uh, it needs to be acknowledged. All right, again, just keeping in mind that grief has multifaceted forms of, 
of emotions. It'll show up in lots of different ways. And I have some of them listed on the screen. Uh, denial, anger, some of these we've talked about. Guilt, remorse, sadness, anxiety. Various physical conditions can come from grief. We've already emphasized that. Even fear. Uh, C.S. Lewis pointed out in some of his statements that nobody ever told me how close fear and grief were in association. And, and that's, the, uh, that's, that's true. And then, of course, depression. So if you find yourself counseling or talking to someone that is going through grief or has experienced a severe loss, and some of these show up out of nowhere, or maybe become elongated in that person's experience, it might help both them and you to understand that expression, that long-term anger, that anger that didn't seem to be there before the loss, that is there very dominant now, could be from, his, from the grieving. And to be able to put the two together oftentimes is a help and will bring about release and freedom in that. So uh, feelings of grief are multifaceted and being able to identify some of them in that process can help. The last one is something I want to talk about later in this session and that's the possibility for growth. Uh, we have biblical mandate, we have physical uh, illustrations, how that oftentimes from grief and loss, when grief is done well, Growth can take place in a person's character, maybe perhaps in their relationships with other people, their personality can improve, a number of things can happen. Growth can, can take place from the grieving process, and I want to point that out. And, that would, and we're going to be talking about the importance of you being involved in other people's life, and this being one of them.